Dr. D, the former three-time Stampede North American champion, former AWA Southern Tag Team champion, a legendary former WWF superstar. Dr. D, what is going on? What's going on in your world? What have you been up to? Well, I'm just trying to stay alive and, uh, you know, just hanging around and I'm building fences to keep dogs away from me. I got bit by a dog here about three weeks ago as I was trying to build a fence, and they thought I might have had rabies. And I said, no, nah, I ain't got no rabies, but uh, them, the dog like to broke my leg. He's about five feet tall. I don't know, one of them Malamutes or whatever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but, you know, I'm all I'm trying to take care of, do my honeydew list. I don't have a honeydew list no more. I got a honeydew book with chapters in it. <laughs> You know, I'm trying to relax. You know, I'm tired of going around beating people up. Everybody's scared of me. Nobody wants to get in the ring with me, and everybody wants to tell a bunch of lies. Nobody wants to tell the truth about anything. And uh, I just can't hardly stand it when people lie and nobody do nothing about it. Now, if you watch TV, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Lie, lie, lie. That's all they do is sit up and lie, lie, lie to each other and everything. I don't got where I watch a black and white TV in my shop now with one of these things you stick in the window to get to channels that they don't show on cable or dish or anything anymore. And it's some of the best TV I ever seen, man, 1950s, 1960s. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just trying to keep my, uh, my head low. I do a lot of uh, autograph sessions, and uh, I don't do a lot. I've cut them down, but you know, I, I'm I'm trying to stop. But people keep calling me about them, and they want to pay me such good money. I have to go, you know. But uh, anyway, I'm still alive and in color. Everybody says I'm dead. Nope, not dead. Uh, everybody says I run off to another country. Nope, I did go to Poland for three years, and. Uh, Thinking about going back over there, but uh, they're kind of talking bad stuff about Poland now, and uh, you know nuclear war, and I don't want to get I don't want to get cues of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know they accuse me of everything else, but uh, anyway, I'm I'm still alive and in color, man, and still doing good. And I sent you that little clip about the book. I didn't know if you had the book or not. Yeah. Uh, Oh, you do? Yeah, of course. Autographed well, by you. you. Yep. Oh, there you go. I thought it might have been. I wasn't sure, though, because, you know, I've been doing real good with them books. I thought that it was going to kind of die off in a, a while, you know. But, uh, darn, it seems like they're doing better now than they was before. And, you know, they. I, I'm working on another one, but it's something I can't talk about. And the writer that's going to write it for me, he's scared to death. Uh, I'm going to have to fire him. <laughs> I can't say that. I can't say that. Hey, it's the truth. You want to tell the truth or you want to lie? If you're going to lie, go somewhere else. I'm not talking to you no more. You know. And he said, you mean all this is true? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I was probably the only, I was probably the only veteran that Vince McMahon had working for him when I first went up there in 84. And you know, nobody ever, they didn't, oh, yeah, yeah, you was a veteran, you was a veteran. Hey, if you don't think I was a veteran, forget it, okay? Just forget it. I'm not trying to uh, make you believe anything. So I got where I wouldn't talk to anybody hard, you know. And all of them want to, uh, you know, people want a, a false front, you know. Nobody wants to tell the truth. Nobody, everybody wants to uh, make a uh, make-believe character. Let me tell you, I'm a cartoon character. I'm an exhibitionist. I'm a storyteller, I'm whatever, but one thing I'm not, I'm not fake. I never have been, and I'm not scared of no man walking on the face of the earth. And I've always told them that, and they really, really got scared of me. And Vince McMahon shakes in his pants when I go around. If he's got pants on, he's probably wearing a girdle and a pair of panties, as far as I know, because he's a no good, <laughs> he's a garbage, he's a liar, he's a thief. Child molester, I've been saying this for years, and I talk about it in my book. And, you know, this guy is, is, is dirty as they come. And I don't know why they haven't investigated Vince McMahon and uh, a couple of presidential candidates. I'm sure there's a lot of money there. A lot of money going around. It's like two big dollars. You got to pay a lot of, uh, you know, we call bribes or thank you money or whatever. But, you know, if you have that much money, you can die and all that. 
I could never dodge anything. I had to face it face first, you know. And all my lawyers, they all sold me out. They, uh, you know, and now I hear there's a show coming out called Bell Jumpers. Well, I copyrighted Bell Jumpers probably 10, 12 years ago. Manuscripts, um, Dick Clark, different people want to wanted to steal. I, I say they wanted to steal it, but I'm not telling them, nope. They wanted to pay me a percentage, and I said, nope, don't want it. So I kind of put it back on the back shelf, and everybody I went to talk to about it, nobody wanted to do bell jumpers or Doc's Law or anything else. And now I've seen on TV the other day, they got bell jumpers coming out. Well, you know, people say, well, why don't you sue them? Well, I don't have the money to sue them. You better have a lot of money you sue them people. TV people and crooks and crime investigators, lawyers. But I'm going to tell you, the lawyer is going to get the biggest percentage of it, and he's going to drop you. I've been dropped by seven or eight attorneys during my wrestling career, and, uh, you know, they got, I'm sure they got paid off. And of course, they didn't tell me that, but I'm sure that's what happened. Uh, you know, but anyway, anyway, I'm happy. I have no regrets. I'm doing great. And, uh, I'm just trying to take care of my dogs and my horses and my pigs and my cows and my coyotes and my cats. And <laughs> I live on a funny farm, I think, you know. But Yeah, uh, that yeah, seems like you know, it. It's nice down here in Tennessee. I've got, I've got close to 100 acres and all fenced off and everything. And I kind of got some swamp in there and got some beaver dams now flooding the roads out and I I, I knew about it, man. The beavers are here before we were, you know. But anyway, any, uh, anything on your mind, especially you want to know about Doctor D? Yeah, like the relationship with Vince. When when did it go sour? I'm guessing it has to do with the John Stossel stuff. But like you said, you you know maybe more of this alleged Vince stuff than most people. Yep, Vince. Uh, when when I went out. And uh, Vince come to the dressing room that night in Madison Square Gardens, and he said, I want you to go out and blast this guy, tear his ass up, stay in character. Well, everybody in the dressing room heard that, but we was over in the corner, like off to the side, And uh, but you could hear Vince and me talking, you know. So I went out, and, uh, you know, he said, blast him, tear his ass up to me. Blast him means if he gets out of out of hand or out of concept, like he's trying to uh, say that wrestling is phony, it's not real and all that. The only thing I could do was slap him. And I slapped him, and he got up, and I slapped him again. Because where I come from, if you knock a man down, uh, you need to get ready. If he gets back up, knock him down again before he has time to get you. So, anyway... That's that's the way that happened. Now, Vince paid John Stossel. I don't know exactly what he got, but he paid him off. And then later on, John Stossel's show, it was John Stossel's TV show, he said, I didn't hurt any more after I got paid. You know, he is the biggest slime ball, the biggest liar I've ever seen on national TV and all the national TV shows like ABC cuddles him up, oh, John, we didn't know this, we didn't know you got beat. No, he didn't get beat, he got slapped. And he deserved it. Everything he got, he deserved it. He didn't deserve the money he got, but Vince gave him that. I had nothing to do with it. I didn't, I wasn't filed any charges against me. I never went to court. I never talked to lawyers. I never done anything. Vince McMahon paid him off, and then he told me, you take the blame for all this, and, you know, basically he was saying, take the blame for it, and I'll take care of you. No, 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 no. I'm not going out there and tell anybody that I did anything on my own. You're the one, and everybody knows you don't go out to do an interview in Madison Square Garden unless the boss tells you to do it. Nobody can just walk in there and start doing an interview. So everybody knew what happened, but nobody could talk. Because Vince would have fired him on the spot. So I was the lone, I guess we can call him the lone ranger, a lone wrestler. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody stand up for me or anything else. 
and I told him, I said, well, he said, if you don't tell them that, you know, uh, I'm going to send you to different countries and they said, no, you're not sending me nowhere. I'm not going anywhere else for you because I know how it is in Egypt and I know how it is in Saudi Arabia and all that. I've been to all of them and it's really easy to get rid of somebody over there. A lot easier than people think. <laughs> but anyway, we kind of partied uh, seven years later the lawsuit that I had against Vince, my lawyer comes in and says, hey, we've been doing this seven years. I'm going to have to drop you. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait, drop me. Seven years, you're going to drop me? And we got everything uh, against Vince. We got him nailed to the wall on this thing. Everybody's talking now, and he said, no, I'm going to have to drop you. Well, uh, then you need to pay me the money I paid you and uh, his name was Timmy Mortahan out of, uh, Waterbury, Connecticut. What a slime ball he turned out to be. And anyway, I got my money back. I paid him up front. And then there was a little bit of money paid, you know, Vince wanted to pay me. I didn't want it. I told him I don't want it. And he said, well, if I don't give it to you, I'm going to give him a check back. It's like you're giving him money. I don't want it. I told him to keep it. About a month later, he called me, if you don't get this check, David, I'm going to have to give it back to Vince, and I'm still dropping you. Well, you don't need to call me no more because I don't want to talk to you no more. Anyway, that's just one of them. And, uh, you know, you run into a lot of con uh, con men, and a poor old boy from Tennessee. I just thought people was good for their word. Man tells you something, that's what it was. His word is uh, it's gospel. <laughs> Excuse me. And, uh, you know, that's the way. You, and then all of a sudden, all these people tell you this, tell you this, tell you this. You're wanting to believe them because it's supposed to be that way. And then all of a sudden, you find out everybody's lying to you, everything. Everything they say, lie, 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 lie. But that Vince got me on that. And uh, one day, one day, maybe, Lord, none, if they don't hang him or shoot him or something, I'll get to meet him face to face again, and that that's a day I've been looking for for a long time. And my wife said, "Oh, you're just going to get in a lot of trouble." <laughs> oh, really? And uh, my wife's my best support. You know, she's like uh, been behind me all the time. You know, leave him alone, stay away from him, don't go near him. And you know, that's what I, I guess I took her advice and. Didn't go looking for him or anything. Didn't have nothing to discuss with him, so I didn't want to be near him after I found out all of the, uh, the um, you know, harassment of kids, sexual uh, charges against him for kids and women and this here. And, that. Oh, man, this guy is loaded with uh, criminal activity. But that's ah, good. They can all enjoy it, I guess, and... I was just wondering how Linda got a job with Trump in the White House after he got elected. But that's another story, too. I'll never know. But uh, a lot of favors was done there, and uh, they I don't know why they don't investigate these people. I mean, uh, Internal Revenue Service, uh, they had them on me. They audited me five years straight in a row because Vince wanted them to, you know, on the lawsuit. Everything, they they tried to take my house from me in Connecticut and Tennessee and Minnesota and different places, the people, people, the apartments and stuff I had, and wanted to put my wife out on the street. I said, y'all are uh, telling with very dangerous stuff now, you know. So it got dropped real quick about trying to take my properties and stuff from me for no reason because they got money and they can run over anybody they want to. But I told him the buck stops here. You know, you're not running over me anymore. And it's been it's been a struggle. All I mean, you start talking about it, it goes on and on for year after year after year after year. And who who loses? I lose. The lawyers don't lose. Vince don't lose. I mean, come on, I'm the only one that lost. And everybody asked me, why don't you sue? I ain't suing nobody. I don't want to sue nobody. I don't want to get involved with nobody no more because I don't have enough money to do that. I got enough to make it until the end if it ain't too soon. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if it don't last too long. But uh, anyway, what a life, man.
probably one of the toughest pro wrestlers ever was. And like yes. I told you, you're scared of no man. And, <clears throat> you know, just never, never seemed to catch a break. But I made my own breaks everywhere I went. I, I took care of myself, took care of business. Everybody loved me for working with me, or, you know, except for the big head guys that thought they were really tough and knew they wasn't tough and knew I wasn't going to back down from them. So, you know, I made a name for myself. And uh, I don't know if it was good or not. I guess it was. I'm still, you know, in demand some places, and that's, that's the way that goes. So what else you want to know about? <laughs> Get Vince on my mind. <laughs> Well, what did you think of those allegations on Vince? I mean, it's it's been it's been out there now. I don't know if you read all that stuff and and all the stuff that's out there. But what did you think when you when you saw that? Well, on, on what now? All those allegations with Vince. Oh, I knew it's true. Everything's true. This guy is a scumbag. I mean, he's as big a scumbag you could ever want to be around. And that's one reason I was so disgusted. When this guy got away with everything, and he got away with it, and got away with it, nobody could uh, pin him down, you know. And then all of a sudden, a few of the a few people won lawsuits against him, but you know, then he come back uh, like Rita Marie Chatterton, uh, the referee, the the lady that you know, referee and Vince had made her have sex with him, or she wasn't going to have a job anymore, and he's all. Oh, it's all sour grapes. She didn't do that. She did this. She did that. Did that. She did blah, 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 blah. Then here last year or a year or two later, I hear he paid her off. After calling her a liar and uh, everything else, he agreed. He paid her off, and she come out pretty good on it, I guess. I mean, uh, you know, but it's just, you know, and kids. I mean, this guy abused kids. And everything, and got away with it just because he got money. And he got money by lying, cheating, scumbag tricks, and anything else he could do. And but you know, I guess he's happy with it. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I could be happy. Everybody knowing that I was a piece of garbage like that, still walking around. But that's the way it goes, you know. Would you say, what? Ben? Would you say Vince is the reason you and Hulk kind of had, had a big falling out? Because you and Hulk were buddies yeah, yeah, for a while, yeah, and you guys had awesome yeah, chemistry together in, the, in those matches in 84, the yeah. Minnesota Massacre and everything else. Yeah, we was all, uh, me and Terry and me, we were good friends, probably the best of friends. I, I let him stay at my house when he first come down to Pensacola. I let him stay at my house in Tennessee because he had nothing but a band to sleep in. And I'd let him stay at our house. And, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I thought we were a friendship that would never be broken. Then all of a sudden, he come up in New York that Vince told him, you get away from David, stay away from him. Uh, it's either Schultz or me. And uh, I guess Hogan chose him, which was probably the best choice for him. But, uh, you know, it's... it's uh, when Hogan went in and told Vince... David's going to beat me for the belt on national TV. And Vince said, well, why don't you beat him? You beat him. <laughs> hmm. But anyway, that's the story, the way the story went, you know. And then Vince had to get rid of me. He had to create something to get rid of me, like all the home videos, which wasn't my home, wasn't my wife, wasn't my kids. Everything I did was uh, Vince created it. All the guns, all the shows that I did, because he wanted me to be the baddest person ever walked. The bad mean, just mean. And I guess he got it done, you know. But, you know, Hogan, uh, I never spoke to him since then, that day. And that was a long time ago. But he's getting what he reaped. You know, you reap what you sow. And he's getting it now, so, you know, let him enjoy himself. And Vince, too, let him enjoy his life because uh, he, he's, he's getting paid back for what he sold. And Hogan, too. Hogan screwed around a lot of people in his business just for the almighty dollar, which, that, hey, that's the way they roll. That's the way it should go. 
Me, I just have a good time. That's all I do. Like I said, I'm not fake. I'm not a guy. I, 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 they can call me cartoon character. They can call me a, a storyteller. They can call me a, anything they want to call me. Just don't call me fake because I'm not fake. Uh, I'm entertaining and probably entertainer of the year, but they never give that to me either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always stop me. Now, Rowdy Roddy Piper said that you basically, in front of the whole locker room, when Vince first became owner and took over for his dad, that you basically punked out Vince. Is that true? Did you call him out in front of the boys and tell him, you know, get the hell out of the locker room? Or is, is that not true? No, I never did that. No, I never did that. I can remember I didn't. Uh, we had an incident in Rhode Island one time that Vince uh, come up to me, and I was fixing to dump one of the guy's head in the commode, and Vince come in and said, David, leave these guys alone. They're all scared of you, but I'm not. I said, well, you should be the one that's scared of me more than any of the rest of them. Now, I don't know if that's what he's talking about or what, you know. <clears throat> no, I never called him out in front of nobody. I did my business. If I had something to say to Vince, I'd go to his office or I would. we would go off to the side, you know. Because I thought Vince was a upstanding guy at that time because I dealt with his father for a while. A nice guy. Nice guy. Tell you something, that's the way it was. And you think the son would be like the father. Well, I found out different real quick. But no, Roddy Piper, a lot of guys like to talk about me. A lot of guys like to tell stories about me. And just because it's me and they think they can get attention by talking about me. And when they include themselves in the scenario, they think they're getting over, like, you know, hey, yeah, I was there when Dr. D slept that guy. I was there when Dr. D did this. I was there when Dr. D did this. None of them was anywhere around any time, as I know of, of stories that they're talking about. They everybody talk about Randy Savage and me. Now, Randy and me was good friends. We'd been good friends for years and years and years before he come up. We was partners in Memphis before he went to the WWE, WWF at that time. And, uh, you know, we never, I don't think I've ever had a cross word with Randy, uh, you know. But everybody else said, oh, no, Schultz and uh, uh, Randy Savage fixed to have it out, fixed to have it out, blah, blah, blah. Why? Because they believe what we say on TV and they believe that we're mad at each other try to make money. That's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> Rocky Johnson, very good friend of mine, great worker. We always got along great. We was in matches with him and Tony Atlas. Well, Rocky would tell me, Doc, everything's good, man. Everything's cool. I said, well, what's wrong with Tony? Uh, he's all right. And Tony would come up to me and say, hey, Doc, why are you talking about my father, man? Tony, I never knew your father. But I'm sure he was black like you. And Tony looked at me like, huh? <laughs> I said, never mind, Tony. <laughs> it just kind of went over his head, you know. Yep. Well, you shouldn't talk about tying him up and beating him with a belt and everything. Well, I didn't know he was your father at that time. Huh? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. It just, you know, I said, I better quit right here before I, you know, we're scrambling this thing up for Tony. And, and today I see Tony is like, you know, Hugs my neck, Doc. How you doing? Everything good? Uh, maybe somebody smartened him up. That it was all uh, entertainment. Rocky Johnson, a great entertainer. He knew. Uh, I mean, you know, I went with him to visit his mother and Dwayne when Dwayne was seven or eight years old. And in Hawaii, we had a good time. Everything, and never forget it. They treated me great. You know. And always, always good friends. But everybody else is, oh, man, oh, he's he getting mad. Everybody's mad at him. Everybody's mad. <laughs> hey, what are we out here for? We're out here to make money. And how do you make money? You make people mad. And they pay to see you get beat. And as long as they don't beat you, you make money. Once they beat you in the middle of the ring, uh, they don't need you anymore. But that's what we're there for, to make money. We're not there for uh, our health, you know. 
and and never missed a match in my life. Never, not one time. And even in the events today, when I get these events, I drive up to Massachusetts, I drive to New York, I drive out to uh, Boston, I drive to uh, Arizona. I drive. I, I don't fly unless it's absolutely an emergency or need to or something. You know, I love to drive, and I always never missed a show, not one time in my whole career. And that's the way it was. I was booked as my job, and I, uh, you know, never have somebody say, "Well, he he they wasn't going to be here anyway." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the business, though. That's the business. And uh, why should I know them? And uh, you know, I didn't know any of them. none of them at that time. Uh, now I still don't know them. I've seen them there, and uh, you know. They come up, they all want to shake my hand, they just hear this, hear this, hear. And some of them don't even want to talk to me or look at me because they're still mad at me, I guess. I don't know. Don't care. But uh, that's my problem. I just got the I don't care attitude, you know. And uh, that's just a lot of work, you know. Now, what, I, know you, I know you got something on your mind you want to ask me. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about Mr. T. <laughs> Mr. Oh. T, Mr. T, remember Mr. T, yep. the old uh, A team, BA yep. Baracus. Yep. yep. What was the, what was that like with T? Because didn't you and him get into it? No, me and him never got into it. Uh, what happened to Mr. T? He was in L.A. I was in the ring, and he was out with Tora Tanaka, which is a good friend of mine. And Mr. T was sitting there with him, and we were just uh, agging it on uh, Tanaka and Mr. T. And I told him, come on up into the ring, and uh, I'll make you shine my shoes. Well, the inquirer got a hold of it, and they said that Mr. T backed down all this here. Then the next thing was uh, uh, Hogan said that I slapped Mr. T in front of him. It was a lie, 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 lie. And everybody else said that Mr. T was uh, coming into the ring that night. They removed me from L.A., and... uh, uh, me and Mr. T was talking. We was going to eat dinner after the match towards the Naga, Mr. T, and myself. By the time I got back, Mr. T was the reason that we, we were, and uh, you almost lost me. I said, well, maybe I've talked long enough on him. He, uh, he thought I was going to talk <laughs> 10 minutes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, keep going. i got a lot to talk about. That, that reason, people, they say, Man, this guy's got story, story, story. Well, hey, I'm an old man. I got a lot of stories, a lot of, I mean, I've always been in the middle of action. Bounty hunting, working in Egypt as an engineer, Sikorsky aircraft for three years. I mean, I worked Germany, I worked all these places, and one of the greatest bounty hunters there ever was. And, you know, when you do a book, they have these fact checkers, and they wanted a fact checker, like receipts where you brought people in. Well, at that point, 20000 was probably I had receipts for and everything. And, you know, I brought in, I'm not, not, <laughs> not 20000 I'm sitting here coughing out here, ain't got no water here in my shop anyway. But 4,000 people I brought in, and 2,000 they got receipts for and were they, when they checked the stories on them. And the other 2,000, I said, listen, a lot of these guys I got the day they missed court. They'd call me. I'd go get them at the house or the shop where they, you know, no receipts. Just grab them and say, hey, you're under arrest. Let's go. And a lot of them, most of them was out of state, like California, Florida, Georgia, wherever I track them down, you know. But we ain't got into that yet. I just want to tell you that I've had a, a lot of a lot of stories behind me, you know, doing things. And but Mr. T, I'm sorry, yeah. I got yeah. off track there. Yeah, no, he, uh, Mr. T, and me was good friends. We had no problem or anything. They created the problem with Mr. T and me. Everybody talked and this year, this year, and they said that I got mad because he was in WrestleMania one. That's not true. I'm glad he got the spot, you know, because Vince got rid of me uh, two or three months before. And, you know, he had to cover it somewhere, but I guess he had it planned in his mind to cover it all along and start these stories on me. 
but that's the way it was. He never, I never slapped him. He never slapped me. And, uh, you know, never had a really a bad word with him. I mean, you know, I hate that I missed that dinner that night with Tanaka and him, you know, in L.A., but I was told to leave the area and don't come back, the police. And, you know, so I had to get to the airport and get back to New York. So that's kind of like Clem Cadilla Hopper. I don't know. You're probably too young to know Clem Cadilla Hopper. I just throwed out the back door. They throwed my bags out beside me. And I, I'm in the back of the building. And my bags are out there. And <coughs> the police just throwed me out the back door. <coughs> Well, that's the way it was. That's what they do in L.A. They, you know, do what they want. Now they're doing it all over the world. But, uh, yep, that's um, that's the way it was. So no well, real uh, heat with you and T at all. It's just made up. Do what now? It's just kind of made up, the heat with you and Mr. Yeah, T. Yeah, they made up stuff on me. But they made it up as not the truth, but lies to go along, they didn't want the true story because it sounded too good. So they wanted to make up things like me and Mr. T. Oh, no, Mr. T slapped him or he slapped Mr. T, and uh, they were going to have a fight and they had to get pulled apart. No, 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 no. Pictures in my book show me and Mr. T in the Coliseum hallway just before the match that night where Tanaka and Mr. T and myself was going to eat dinner afterwards. You know, that 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 picture was taken just before the match. So, I mean, no, all that crap. And I don't know if Mr. T ever said anything about it. You know, when Hogan had Belzer in front face lock and cut his hair off, knocked him out, that TV, uh, you know, Mr. T was with him then. But, you know. He shouldn't have did that, but he did. But he got no, uh, I don't know how much it cost him. I guess Belzer, I guess, bought him a nice house somewhere in Italy or Spain, somewhere, something they said. But they just said that. I never repeated that because I didn't know the facts. I didn't think it was true, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't repeat stuff unless I know it's true. And half the things I see, I don't believe. Nothing I hear, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to, let me tell you, let me tell you one thing I don't do. I don't, <coughs> oh, go on. I'm going to have to get my dog, get him up here and get me a drink of water or something. Uh, but, you know, the people just, they just like to make up stories and talk about it. Like Wayne Ferris, Honky Tonk Man. He made a statement that I said I was going to drop a, I don't know, a bomb in on Vince's house, kill everybody in his house, blow his house up and everything. Well, I hadn't talked to Honky Tonk Man since Calgary, Stu Hart, and never talked to him since he'd been with Vince or that I was with Vince. And that never crossed my lips to drop a bomb in on Vince McMahon, a mortar round, I think he called it. And Wayne has made every effort he can not to be on any cards where I'm at. He's even backed out on some cards where I'm at. And I sent word to him. You don't have to worry about it, Wayne. I know you're just a liar. You lied about it, made it up. So it's made up. Don't worry about it. I don't have no uh, regrets. I know you. I was partners with you. We rode up and down the road together for years, years, and years. He lived about 30, 40 miles from me down here in Tennessee, uh, you know, and I could tell you a lot of stories about Wayne Ferris that would, uh, uh, you'd say, uh, uh, uh. But then you'd say, well, you're just saying that. No, I'm not just saying anything. That's the reason I don't talk about it. Because you're not going to believe it. But that's the way it is. And he feels like he could uh, get along, get with Vince about saying that. And no, nope, it didn't happen. I never said that to Wayne Ferris. Never ever even thought about it. And I don't know where to get no more than rounds anyway. He, I know uh, where I could get some C4. I, well, <laughs> one time I did, not no more. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I don't do stuff like that. 
I'm a nice guy. But he maybe he maybe just trying to get like uh, some attention or some you know tell crazy stories and make oh, his yeah. interviews seem better. Yeah, exactly. They got something to talk about. They come out there and talk about it, you know. And but the thing they don't know about me is <clears throat> I don't forget anything. I'm getting old, and everybody talk about boy, you don't lose your memory at all. Nope. I remember everything that I ever done. I mean, I can tell you about. Uh, driving down the road with different characters and I say something about them and they say, you remember that? Well, it happened. My memory is that way. I just, you know, some people are gifted to remember things. And me, I remember all the good, bad, and the ugly. It don't make any difference. I remember it. And when I talk about it, I don't lie. I don't make up stories uh, about it, you know. And people, and some of it is unbelievable. I mean, but that's the way it is. And, you know, and people used to, while well, I was doing the book, you know, John Cosper said, how do you remember this? And I said, well, I did it, and I remembered it, and that's, you know, yeah, but it's been so long ago. Yeah, but when you're out here in New York City at 3 o'clock in the morning, and you're by yourself, and you're bringing a guy in out of the swamps, I'll call it, of New York, or the bowels of New York, and you're the only person down there, uh, I'll just say the only white guy down there, and I've got to bring a Jamaican uh, drug dealer out of the projects, and I'm by myself 3 o'clock in the morning. I have no problem with that. Never had a problem with it. That's the reason I was so good at what I did. I'd go in, I'd, I mean, my wife would say, well, one of them going to make it true one night, David. Nah, no, no, no. I'm too careful. And, you know, it was one night I kind of pulled my gun out and thought it was a dog coming around the corner, but it was a rat in New York City. Oh, my God. Yeah, they got a, oh, yeah, a huge yeah. rat. <laughs> I said, damn, I've got to get out of here. And, uh, you know, that's when I left. I said, I ain't going back down in there now. That, uh, that, that rat had to be 30 pounds, 40 pounds. And he looked like he wanted to bite somebody. Jesus. Well, I didn't want him to bite me, so I left. And I didn't want to shoot a gun and scare everybody. So I, mm. I just had a BB gun anyway. They thought it was a real one <laughs> at that time. But anyway, a lot of stories like that that, you you know, people, you tell them and they say, oh, let that be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It ain't no uh, just a special occurrence. Go up there in a certain part of the concourse, Grand Concourse in New York City, and see if you don't find some rats that big. They're huge. New York City, oh. an overpriced oh. hell, hellhole, big time. Oh, my God, huge rats, man. They, You know, and they ain't scared of you either. No, not scared of you at all. They'll back you up. <laughs> hey. Excuse me, I got to go this way. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah, I mean, don't worry about it. I mean, you know, that's a very, very good idea. I mean, man, I was all over. And uh, now I wouldn't do it. Today I wouldn't do it. I, was, I have done some as recently as last year. Just go pick a guy up. Somebody's scared to pick him up because he said he's going to kill the first person to come after him. So I'd go pick him up and bring him in. The bondsman would say, man, you charged me a lot of money. We told you where he's at. Why didn't you go get him? I didn't want to go down there. That's right. So I mean. <laughs> but, you know, I don't have no trouble. Uh, I'm not scared of these people. I mean... We're all humans. Why, why are you scared of a guy? I mean, if you go and you know the guy's bad and you know for a fact that he's bad and you know his reputation that he's real bad, then you go prepared for that. You know, don't walk in there. I mean, it's like taking a knife to a gun pipe. <laughs> Not a good <Yeah>. idea. <laughs> but anyway, that's part of the, that's part of the whole scenario. 
And that's what that book, uh, John Cosford did a good job on it, but uh, he said, man, we can't talk all, we had to, we had to take stuff out all the time. He said, if you put this in here, Vince is going to, you know, have it stopped. And he said, it ain't no sense working on something for a couple of years and then you can't, you know, reap the benefits. So anyway, he did a good job though. And he's got uh, several books out now that's uh, good. They stand there talking a lot. I don't have time to read everything people send me. And John is not somebody to make up stuff, but I don't know to be true, you know. <laughs> Some of the things are, are uh, you know, unbelievable. You know, when you read something that's unbelievable and you say, well, I guess that could, I, I, I want true stuff. And everything in my book is true, 100%. Nothing's made up. It was all true. And that's what, uh, you know, I, I did the book about. I said, I want it true. And we had to stop because it would have been twice the size, you know, if I kept going, kept going. To, as you can tell, I got a few things to talk about. Yes. Yeah. I love the and title, Don't Call Me Fake. I love that. Don't Call Me Fake. That's me. Don't call me anything but fake. And, uh, you know, of course, we have people come to the match and they say, well, are you fake? I say, well, is your mama fake? <laughs> and, they'll, and they'll go, huh? <laughs> you talking about my mama? I don't even know your mama, man. But is she fake? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's the famous answer I get most of the time when I talk to people. I don't know. It, it's really it's really exciting out there when you can talk to somebody and you start telling these stories and it all comes back to you and it adds more. And then I say, wait a minute. I can't tell this story if I don't tell this one. If I tell this one, I can't tell this one. Ah, uh, ah, uh, wait a minute. You got five stories there. Oh, what question. <laughs> yeah. You know, okay. it's, not, it's just not going out here, get in the car, and go to the store. It's going out here, get in the car, and go to the store and make it back home. There's where the action is. And now it's getting where it's, it's horrible. I mean, I, I travel the road all over, and... It is so bad now, and uh, you know, I used to go out at twelve o'clock at night is is my starting time looking for people, and I'd go in kick a person's door down at two o'clock in the morning and drag them out of the house. I dare you to do that today. I'm not going to do it today. But back then was the beginning of it all that you kicked the wrong door down. You just say, "Oops, sorry." And you go, today you kick the wrong door down, somebody's going to get shot or you're going to get arrested and you better have the proper paperwork and all that. And, uh, you know, it just gets all out of hand now because of all the embalming on bail bonds and they let people go for oh, no, nothing. He's wanted for murder, like that guy that killed that girl down with Arizona, Georgia, whatever. You know, the young girl, hey, yep. You know, to me, now this is my opinion, and you probably can't put it on the on the tube or anywhere else, but my opinion, everybody has a right for their own opinion. My opinion of this piece of garbage is the hanging from the highest tree you can find where everybody can see him. And it'll eliminate some of that crap. But no, they'll cuddle him up, let him go, give him a couple thousand dollars, get him a hotel room, and take him to the border and let him go. I don't understand how they expect. I'm not supposed to understand them. See, you got to understand this, and you will understand this. You're like me. You're a regular person, and you can't tell me what's going on, how they're doing all this, and somebody is not suffering the consequences of it. Oh, somebody's suffering the consequences, but, you know, it's just amazing that people get away with these things today.